If you're looking for a stunning view, you'll get it from this spotting scope. This is the Athlon Kronos Tactical G2, a 7 to 42 power by 60 millimeter optic with UHD glass for the clearest, sharpest image and ESP coatings for brightness and color accuracy and a unique tactical range-finding reticle. We're going to take a look at all these features on this episode of Moondog Reviews. Hey, Moondog here. Welcome back to the channel. And no, this is not some freakishly large rifle scope. This is the new Kronos G2. We're gonna see what you get in the box, we're gonna take it outdoors to test it, and we're gonna see what makes this spotting scope tactical and not just tactical. First, let's take a look at the contents of the box, but rather than doing a tedious unboxing video where you're watching me fumble through the packaging, let me just show you what you get in the box. This is a, the Athlon Kronos G2 7 to 42 by 60 millimeter tactical spotting scope. And I gotta say, this definitely looks very tactical. It comes with this very beefy Picatinny rail uh, that can also be changed into two, uh, two other positions on the tube, or you could add a di two additional Picatinny rails should you need to. This is for attaching. Um, uh, range finders or a laser or whatever kind of accessory you want to add uh, or even a camera for that matter uh, or a red dot or what have you um, to uh, your scope and the scope itself is has a very ruggedly rubberized exterior uh, coating on the tube with these very um, aggressive I guess um, tactile ridges here uh, to give you a good grip as well as the rubberized coating itself, should you be in wet, uh, muddy, or uh, cold conditions um, with gloves on or what have you. It comes with front and rear lens caps, but these are traditional sort of very old school lens covers. And these are just really for protecting the glass for transport or storage. They're really not intended to be taken out into the field. Uh, yeah, easily lost. Uh, so if you took it out to the field, yeah, I would. You're gonna lose those. But that's okay. It comes with this neoprene sleeve with neoprene lens covers as well. So this is intended for for you to attach onto uh, the body here. And if you need more protection, uh, this is pretty beefy by itself. The rubberized coating on this. But you attach. You would uh, first need to remove your Picatinny rail, and then. Uh, thread these screw holes through these holes on the neoprene and you know, attach the sleeve onto there and ba basically permanently have uh, your neoprene cover on uh, your scope. But I'm not going to bother with that for right now for this review. Um, just know that that's what it's for. And that is a nice piece of glass. And I got to mention, this is really substantially heavy. Uh, yeah, that just means you're, you're getting a l very rugged and l a l really big pieces of glass inside of here because this thing uh, weighs a ton. Um, not so great if you're hunting, but certainly if you are um, competing, uh, weight is not an issue. And weight does also provide a much more, um, uh, more inertia, therefore a more stable view of things uh, should you be in, in a very gusty, windy conditions, and I've shot in 30 plus mile per hour crosswinds, so yeah, um, that does affect, those kind of winds does affect the view uh, on a scope. So having extra weight is not a bad thing necessarily for those kind of uses. Interestingly, it has two screw holes for attaching a, um, uh, your tripod, or it does come with a picket a Swiss to um, Arca Swiss plate that does, it's a specialized one with two attachment screws. And that allows you um, to, uh, to uh, put the plate on and there's no chance of it sliding and, chain and uh, rotating out of position because you've got two anchor points on there. Or if you need to, you have either one of these is a standard quarter inch screw, photo screw. So you could attach a, a, um, a, a tripod or a, another plate by itself if you show so desire on this. So let's take a check, let's check out this magnification ring here. And it goes from 7 to 42 in a 180 degree turn. 
and it is smooth but I hear a little bit of rubbing right around there uh, but again it feels smooth and this is a rubberized ridge along the ring so that'll help as well this is your mag this is your uh, focus ring actually um, and this is butter smooth that popping is my joints not the the scope so yeah smooth it does have a fast focus here it's a little hard to get to because of uh, the eye cup that's built into there but it is um, nicely knurled so that it gives you a good t textured surface to grab a little bit of a grip onto but at its lowest position it is a little hard to get at initially but you'll be able to adjust it there and it does have a rubberized eye cup that indexes into position but I wish it would go down a little bit further so that you could more easily get at that ocular focus there but there you go so that's the Athlon Kronos G2 let's take it outdoors and to the range and see how well this works we're looking at the peak of Matt Davidson approximately 13 or 1400 yards away and we're looking at it through the scope at its lowest power setting of 7 for our overall best image quality in terms of brightness, contrast, saturation, and detail. And it is quite bright through this scope. In fact, I'm going to have to lower the exposure on this camera just so we can get some more detail. There we go. Not so blown out. So much more realistic here in terms of what we're looking uh, what we're seeing through the glass here and as we bring up our magnification we just magnify also all the faults in the glass so let's bring it up to about halfway which is 20 power and it is still quite detailed and sharp let's bring it up to 40 power 42 power I should say to its maximum and let me just adjust the focus and exposure slightly. There we go. That white object we're seeing due to the right of the center crosshairs, right around where the uh, four height marker is, that is a trail marker sign at the top of the hill. It's uh, a, a uh, steel sign on top of an eight foot pole. Um, so it's a good proxy for a steel target, for a 30 inch steel target at this distance. And we have a hiker over there. That's a good way. Let's see if we can measure that hiker using the measuring bars below. Let's look at a still frame so we can get a good look at that range estimator guide. It's calibrated for a six foot tall individual, and this individual's head is actually smaller than the space for the thousand yard guide, which means they're a little over a thousand yards away. Now that we've tested out the quick ranging guide, let's test the scope's clarity and resolution. We're looking at our targets at 100 yards, and it is so bright that I'm actually having to manually reduce our exposure just so we can see some details on there. And it is a nice, clean image from center to edge with good detail and color saturation. Let's bring this up halfway to 20 power. And we're still looking at a pretty sharp image, center to edge. It's pretty good. All right, let's bring it up to its maximum. Okay, going up to 42 power, and we're just going to need to readjust the focus there. And it is still sharp from center to the outer edge. A little bit of color fringing, but no distortion on the outer edge at all that I can really measure. Um, and speaking of color, let's look at our color reference chart on the top left. The colors are quite vibrant, but you can make out quite a lot of fine details in each of the uh, the gradient strips on the sides. There is a lot of detail that you can pull out from, from this glass here. And speaking of a practical detail, I can make out tiny 22 caliber bullet holes on the paper target on the bottom left below that sticker target there. And I can even make out the wrinkles on the paper. Uh, looking at our U.S. Air Force optical resolution chart on the bottom right, I can make out both horizontal and vertical lines down to element 6 in group 0, and dare I say, I can even make out element 1 in group 1, which is just outstanding for a 42 power scope. This is really, really sharp glass. 
All right, before I get into what I think of this spotting scope, I'd just like to ask a quick favor. Hit that like button right now. It just takes a second. And if you like my content, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything when you hit that subscribe button, but it's, it encourages me to make more videos like this. And if you hit that bell icon, you'll be notified when I post my next product review video. All right, so. The Kronos G2 Tactical really is one of the sharpest spotting scopes that I've tested. And I heard a story from one of the reps at SHOT Show that they were using this to spot for targets at 3,000 yards. And I thought that was a bit of an exaggeration until I actually tested this. So yeah, that's actually legit. Um, the one thing about uh, the tactical reticle on this, it, re it does work. And I was able to estimate a range of about 1,000 yards for the hiker that I was using as a reference. Uh, which is pretty close to the 1300 that Google Maps was giving me. But again, I don't know the exact height of the person I was uh, using as a reference. And again, it's an estimation and a lot easier to use their range estimation uh, system on here than using mill hashes and doing the calculations in your head if uh, you can even remember them. Um, but I think I would have liked if they would have found some way to add the Christmas tree that's found in the Kronos BTR line of, uh, of scopes, or I think it's also an available in all of Athlon's um, other uh, Athlon scopes, the uh, APLR uh, Christmas tree reticle. It would have just been nice to have uh, a sort of a one-to-one -one with other Athlon scopes. And you know, if you're gonna buy an Athlon G2, wouldn't uh, Athlon expect you to buy one of their scopes as well? So, you know, as a benefit, um, you using the same reticle. Anyway, just my thought on that. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think that's superfluous. Um, the other little pet peeves I have about this is the attachment points for the, the pick rail. Um, they're on the tube, which means that you have to have a slightly higher than standard pick rail to be able to clear the bell. And maybe there is a way to attach um, um, a pick rail to the bell instead of the tube. Um, but you know, you, you can just go with either um, buying a standard pick rail and uh, a riser, I suppose, if you need to attach other things like a laser designator or flashlight or what have you. Uh, the other thing about the design of this is I find the, the ocular fast focus to be a tad um, thin. To It's hard to, to get a hold of when it's all the way down. And especially if you're in cold weather or the wet hands, it's going to be really a bit of a challenge uh, if you need to get at this. So I wish they could have designed this to be a little bit uh, easier to, to uh, manipulate, but again, it's fairly minor and it is you know, well knurled, so you can, it does have a, a good bit of traction, just, just a, maybe another half inch more uh, of purchase on here would have been uh, great. But overall, I really like this uh, spotting scope. Uh, I want to thank Athlon for sending one out for me to test and evaluate. And if you're interested in picking one up, uh, I'll include product links as well as more information in my full written review at moondogindustries.com. Definitely check that out and use those links if you're interested in buying one of these because it does help support this channel. So thanks again for watching. You be safe out there. Moondog out. Hey, I'd like to know what you thought of this video. Leave me a comment or chat with me on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, MeWe, Instagram, or Locals. And if you want to see all of my videos, go to MoondogIndustries.com.